Hey guys, this is Wave618. It is the 29th of May 2019 and it's just gone half past five in the evening BST. So in today's video, we're going to do an update on Bitcoin. Um, yeah, so what we're going to essentially be looking at is the long term count. So we're going to just quickly summarize the long term count that I've drawn out here. Then we're going to look at the intermediate count. Um, essentially explaining this parabolic price action that we've seen currently exceeding the 8300 level gone slightly higher all the way up to around 8900 and um, we're going to determine whether this is going to go higher or lower and in order to decipher that we're going to home in on even as far as the 15 minute chart just to get a better idea of where price is going all right so that's what's going to be involved in today's video if you're interested stay tuned guys okay so yeah as I mentioned we're going to start talking about the long-term count on Bitcoin and um, quickly just before we jump into this I want to mention just uh, because recently I set up on my website uh, wave618.com um, so this is the website uh, basically this new course that was opened up last week so people have been joining and the community is growing which is nice to see I want to make you aware if you are interested we're starting at low fees for the time being. It may work its way up later on, but whatever fee you start subscribing at is the fee that will be constant for you. Um, and if you want to sample that, you can. if you go into here for free, there is a sample of the first video in the series for the cryptology course. Uh, basically, the cryptology course is covering the top 15 market cap cryptocurrencies. Uh, and as well as that, you get access to the Discord that the that people in this course also have uh, access to. So this is a very um, useful growing community where we share the analysis that I use. Uh, people have really got the, the hang of my strategy and the, the tools that I use, and it's been really useful to share and debate all the different charts using those strategies. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, the next video in the series is out tomorrow. So if you want to take advantage of that, then uh, you can sign up there if you're interested. Um, the other thing is we're going to do a 50% discount on the course, uh, which is the works course. Um, so, and yeah, just to remind you, you do get Discord community access with this. You just have to request it after signing up. Um, yeah, so details about that. You'll, I'll put the disc, um, the link to the discount in the description of this video. But okay, I won't dwell too much on that. Let's home in on Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, this is our long-term count. So we've got W, three waves down. There's one, two, three. Yeah, there was a very good Fibonacci relationship between those waves, um, which I've, I've addressed many times in previous videos. So I won't dwell on it because there's so much to cover in this video. Uh, then we've got our X wave, which is basically a descending triangle. That's A, B, C, D, E. And then we get our last three waves down to make our Y wave. And that 3200 was essentially the target which got hit, it's kind of superseded, it's slightly going down to around 3130, I believe. Um, so since then, we've basically seen this price move up, which has gone up very, very dramatically. And it's basically taken out this downward descending pitchfork here. So basically, when you when you get your first two waves of, a, of an Elliott wave count, <clears throat> What I like to do when I apply pitchforks is I use those first two waves to apply the pitchfork. So you basically use the first, uh, the start of the first wave is the first pivot, end of the first wave is the second pivot, and then end of the second wave as the third pivot. You then get your pitchfork drawn for you using here the shift pitchfork, which is usually the pitchfork that gets adhered to best in corrective price action. And why is it significant? Well, price often bounces off these pitchfork lines but also, it's also significant because when this upper warning line here gets taken out, it signifies a, a major change in trend. So it basically is it's really telling us the downward trend has, has essentially finished. Um, and you can see here, after taking out this level, price really did go vertical. Um, so yeah, for me, this is where I switch my bias from bearish to bullish, just because that 
major line had been taken out. So I posted a video about this, I think it was around eight months ago, saying that this line was really important to watch. Um, and then basically, yeah, we went parabolic and we absolutely took out this horizontal, this horizontal uh, resistance level, took it out very cleanly, um, which caught pretty much everyone by surprise. Everyone was expecting a little bit of a pullback around this level, around 6,400, but it absolutely flew through it. Um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about the wave count uh, in this price action here and where we can expect to see a pullback. Um, so first of all, it looks like we've got an impulse here in corrective price action here. And then we've seen this move up. So the way I've got it is this is a wave one, this is wave two, and then we're in wave three right now. Uh, so this is the point I wanna address. Now there's an argument that wave three finished here. Okay, so our, our major wave three, so that's our wave one, two, wave three here. And, and then we, we could still be in wave four at present, which I'll address in a moment. Or alternatively, there's another play out where we were still in wave three, it's not quite finished. And that's probably my preferred count, so I'll address that first. So if this is still wave three, We've got our pitch fork here, so first two waves of wave three, so we've got our wave one, wave two, so you can see here five waves up, corrective price action, three waves down to here, again using the first uh, first two waves to plot our pivots. You get this very nice original pitch fork we're using here, which is useful for um, impulsive price action. We get a lower warning line uh, supporting price action here, and then price shoots up to the medium line test it several times, then we go sideways to our lower warning line before then going up to our upper warning line. So clearly a very important pitchfork where the, the, the median lines are getting respected time and time again. Um, so the question is now, how do we apply the Elliott wave count to this price action? So the way I've got it is this is a wave one, wave two, and to me it looks like this is a wave one, two, three up to here. The reason I say that is because I think we're going to have to zoom in on the four hourly here. So if this is our wave one starting here, wave two down to here, bringing our fib lines across. So I've got this 1.618 extension probably uh, where wave, wave three, it's a very typical extension for wave three. So often you'll see price slightly overshoot, wick above. Um, so I've got this as a wave one, two, three, then this is four, and then wave five is often in Bitcoin and crypto especially, it's your parabolic move where um, the move is often much greater than the first three waves. So the way I've got it is this wave one, two, three, four, around here and then our fifth wave of wave three will be a one two three four has been this triangle which we'll have to zoom in on to look at it better and now we're seeing wave five go higher and i'll address shortly why 9400 is a significant resistance level we could find resistance there but if that gets taken out the next key resistance that i see is around 11700 um, so obviously that looks like if we do go that high, we'd be exceeding this pitchfork. And for that reason, I certainly would be looking to take profits around the 9,400, which seems to give a bit more confluence with the, um, so horizontal resistance and pitchfork, both giving confluence around that level. Um, so yeah, as I say, it will be a one, two, three, wave four triangle, and then our fifth wave. So just to look at that triangle in a bit more detail, on the hourly, I think we can see it. So there's a couple of ways of looking at this triangle. I've, I've mentioned it quite a few times on Twitter, if you follow me there. But so strictly speaking, the A wave came down here, B, C, D, and E. So we've got a, essentially a pretty horizontal top here, and then ascending lows. Um, on other charts you don't get this big wick down. For example on Bitfinex you'll get this 
point here being at your low and then it looks a bit more regular the the lows of the triangle there this big wick does kind of distort the triangle a little bit um, so then yeah we get the break above this level quite impulsive price action going up um, yeah so that that's essentially the wave count if we're looking at it from that perspective now let's just look at it from the other perspective which i think is really important to address because you can never know for sure which wave count is going to be respected so um so let's look at it from the alternative scenario so the alternative scenario is this is wave one two and wave three finished here with this being one two three running flat four and five up to here um so if that was the case, then we've got this as uh, wave one. Uh, wave two down to here and wave three almost, you know, just slightly going above the 4.236 before you start seeing this consolidation. Now the wave four, if this is the case, you'd expect it to last longer than just this move down or even just this triangle. I mean, if this is wave two, you'd expect wave four to go on a bit longer than this, in which case there's an argument that wave four has not finished. It could be, for example, a running flat. So here you've got, let's go on the hourly chart to see it better. But you could have a wave four where this is three waves down and this is three waves up. And now we're going to see our C wave, which is five waves down. Um, so just to show you, if we do a fib, just comparing the fib uh, projection, if this is our wave A, bringing it across. Just need to edit that slightly. So we've hit the point 1.236 here, okay? So with a, a running flat, you'll often see that. You'll hit the 1.236 and then you'll come down. So for example, let's label it first so it's a bit clearer just for those that aren't so good with the uh, Elliott wave. So this is our first three waves down to make A. And there's an argument that this is three waves up. To make B and then we're going to see our move down so B has essentially B is a 1.236 extension of wave A as I've just shown and then often if we just use that fib if you use the length of A we may get a one-to-one -one relationship with C and A to make a, a running flat so it may come down to 6700 here one possibility or you could see an expanded flat where price comes down to the 1.382 or 1.618 however you can see those levels uh, come down to 5900 and 5400 and for me that seems a little bit excessive considering the fact that price shot up dramatically from this point here around uh, 6200 it would take a hell of a lot of energy to break this low in my opinion and so for that reason if we do come lower, I expect it to be more of a running flat rather than an expanded flat. However, as I say, bit for next, the low doesn't come down this low. It comes to here. So if you're looking at bit for next, it may turn out to be an expanded flat with this being A, B and C coming down lower than A. Okay. Now I want to make it clear. This is not my preferred count. This is only something I would be looking at if 8300 fails to hold. So for me, this is how I would um, determine which count I'm going to you know, favor. So if we come down below 8300, I'll be looking for this running flat play out, okay, before we then go even higher to make a wave five. Um, for the time being, this is not my preferred count. Um, so let's just take this off. My preferred count would be, just going on the four hourly, um, that the wave three hasn't yet finished yet and saying this is a triangle here and this is our wave five of five where 
we may find some resistance at around 9400 but as I say if it doesn't hold there we could go up to 11,700 uh, because yet yeah, often the pitchfork can get broken especially on these aggressive parabolic price moves why is 9400 a key level so let's just zoom out let's go on the daily so 9400 is a key level if we do a fib retracement from the top down to the bottom so you can see here the 0.382 fib retracement is at 9400 okay so we took out the 0.236 and the next um, fib is the 0.382 which is at 9400 so there are going to be algos that are going to be short at that level there'll be profit taking at that level so I do expect some degree of resistance at that level so I, I, that's why I'm not too greedy and looking to go all the way to 11,700 without taking profit. I would certainly be looking to take some profit at the uh, uh, 9,400 point. Now on top of that, it's also a significant horizontal level. If we go in on the monthly chart, so this is our monthly, and let's just clean up the chart a bit. So. Basically, you can see these two wicks down here both bounced off. Okay, it's, it's around 92.80, around that level. And it's also in keeping with this high here. So this order block here, this green candle. So again, that's 92.80 as well. So 9300 to 9400 is certainly probably the next destination next target that's if we don't go below 8300 as i say for me that is that's the level that i'm really keen to watch to determine um which count is preferred because if we come below 8300 it's it's pretty much rejecting well to be honest the triangle gets rejected if this gets taken out here so 70 7900 that would be the point of invalidation so if 7900 gets taken out then I would no longer be calling this a triangle and a breakout I would be calling it more of a larger scale uh, running flat with this being a B and C coming down to around that 6700 potentially probably finding confluence with the lower warning line of the pitchfork um, that's what I'll be looking for so really it's very key I'm looking I, I want to see 8300 hold just because there's it's a key, it's a key horizontal level here we've found resistance here time and time again broke through quite dramatically and very often price will retest these key levels so would not be surprised to see price come down a little bit further first before it goes higher um, and that's so yeah as i say around so that wave e of the triangle was at 7900 so really that would be the point of invalidation for me um now let's as i said we're gonna have a look on the 15 minute chart let's have a look at what price action is doing here you can see based on this pitchfork ascending pitchfork price is finding a bit of support at this upper warning line at present um but let's look at it on the 15 minute now so I did look at this. I was looking, it's looking pretty corrective. Uh, this was the end of the triangle here. Impulsive price action, one, two, three, four, five, five waves up. So it's quite natural to expect a corrective price action from here. You know, if this was a major C wave down, which should look impulsive, I'd expect it to look more impulsive. At the moment, it's still looking corrective. And that's why oh, right now I'm still of the opinion that 8,300 should hold and will go higher now i did mention on my discord today uh, to the cryptology members um, that we have got what looks like a wxyxz play out with this being um three waves down to here w x and three waves down to make y another three waves up to make second x three waves down to make z and then using that, we drew our pitchfork. So shift pitchfork because it's corrective. 
uh, using our first three pivots. So first pivot, uh, W came to here, second pivot, third pivot here. So that's the original pitch fork. We want to use shift. Um, yeah, so basically you can see here the lines got tested quite a lot. The median line, lower median line, came down warning line. It actually breached the warning line, but then came straight back up to the lower median line. And now we're just testing on the median line. And I mentioned how basically on the completion of these um, corrective price moves, so a potential WXYXZ, a means of getting in, you can use moving averages. In particular, I like to look at the hourly um, EMAs. So mainly the, the 50 is the key one I look at. So I wait for price to break above the 50 and then I look for a retest. So we've actually retested it. And then the 20, once the 50 has confirmed support, the 20 should then be acting as support following that. So you can see here, we've got a W, X, or Y. Then price came up above the 50, tested it several times, but then you can see the 20 never really acted as good support. It stayed below the 20 and then the 50 broke. Now we've gone above the 50, we're above the 20, I'd expect the 20 to act as support now if this is going to go up from here. Okay, so this is just using moving averages to you know, time your trade a bit better. Rather than trying to get in at the bottom, it's a lot better to wait for these moving averages to act as support because they are markers of trend, uh, essentially. So um, just taking off the moving averages a moment. You can see here, so this was the end of our the triangle that I was calling. Um, and so if this is our impulsive move, let's take off magnet mode. If this is our impulsive move up to here, we've retraced 50%, yeah? So there is confluence, there's a Fibonacci retracement. Uh, so there's a WXYXZ play out, there's pitchfork support, there's Fibonacci retracement of 50% also. So that was quite a lot of reasons for why it, should, it could be considered the end of this temporary correction and a potential move to the next target of 9400. That's why I decided to take a punt and when it got above the 50, uh, 50 hour EMA, I did put a position in, but supposing that uh, 50 fails to hold, I will be closing the position. Um, now, I did mention that there is a possibility it could be an extended correction with this potentially, these three waves could be a major W. In fact, let's just change the count, make it clearer. So I did mention this could be a W, X, and then Y comes down further. We we'll change our pivot slightly. That'll be our first pivot, or second pivot rather. X would be here. So then shift pitch fork, warning line would be down here, and then there'll be confluence with the 8300 support. There's the 0.618 fib retracement of this impulse move up, and it could be the completion of a WXY. However, with us currently being above the 50 hour EMA, I'm happy to look at this as a potential move up from here. However, if it breaks down, this is the next opportunity for support, in my opinion. It'll be off the pretty much off the 8300 level. Um, where it could find the completion of a correction. Um, so yeah, that's the way I'm looking at it at present. Um, so we've looked at the long-term count, the intermediate count, the short-term count. I've explained the alt um, all the different methods in which it could play out. So we're prepared for any play out. And yeah, my preferred count is obviously, as I say, I'm, I'm in a position at the moment. However, if the 50 hour EMA doesn't hold, yeah, I'll, I'll close it down. Uh, with a potential opportunity to get back in around 8300 if price action continues to look corrective down to here uh, just because we've got that 0 0.618 uh, support uh, the 0 0.618 of the previous impulse we've got a WXY play out if it does look corrective coming down and we've got the key horizontal support of 8300 so um, yeah I think that wraps up what I'm looking at in Bitcoin um, I do put updates on the discord so if you're interested you know you you know the website wave618.com there's more information on the website if you click on each course it gives you more information about each one 
If you are interested, then feel free to sign up. Uh, as I say, there's going to be discounts. You might want to wait for that on the, uh, the educational course. Uh, links to that will be in the description. Um, yeah, it'd be good to have more people in the, the Discord community, which is growing well. Um, but the more, the merrier. Um, so, yeah, if you enjoyed today's content, leave a like. Um, feel free to put any queries in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up there, guys. All right, take care. Thank you.